Welcome back to Deep Learning. Today we want to talk about a couple of the more advanced GAN concepts, in particular the conditional GANs and the cycle GANs. So let's have a look what I have here on my slides. It's part four of our unsupervised deep learning lecture. And we first start with the conditional GANs. So one problem that we had so far is that our generator creates a fake generic image, but it's not specific for a certain condition or characteristic. So let's say if you have text to image generation, then of course the image should depend on the text. So you need to be able to model the dependency somehow. And of course, if you want to generate zeros, then you don't want to generate ones. So you need to put in some condition whether you want to generate the digit 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And this can be done by encoding conditioning, which is introduced in reference 15. So the idea here is now that you essentially split up your latent vector into the z that has essentially the observation and then you also have the condition which is encoded here in the conditioning vector y and you concatenate the two and use them in order to generate something and also the discriminator then gets the generated image but it also gets access to the conditioning vector y so it knows what it's supposed to see and the specific generated output of the generator. So both of them receive the conditioning and this then essentially again results in a two-player min-max game that can be described as again as a loss that is dependent on the discriminator but here you additionally have the conditioning with y in the loss. So how does this then work? So you add a conditional feature like smiling, gender, age or other properties of the image and then the generator discriminator learns to operate in those modes and this then leads to the property that you're able to generate a face with a certain attribute and the discriminator learns whether this is the face given that specific attribute. So here you see different examples of generated faces the first row are just random samples. The second row are conditioned into the property old age. And the third row is given the condition old age plus smiling. And here you see that the conditioning vector is still able to produce similar images, but you can actually add those conditions on top. So this allows then to create really very nice things like image to image translation. So you have here several examples for inputs and outputs and you can essentially then create labels to street scene, you can generate aerial to map, you can generate labels to facade, black white to color, day to night, edges to photo. And the idea here is that we use the label image again as a conditioning vector and this leads us to the following observations that this is this domain translation is simply a conditional GAN. So here the positive examples are given to the discriminator where you have the handbag and the edges of the handbag and the negative examples are then constructed by giving the edges of the handbag to the generator, generator handbag and then give it to the discriminator. 
So you can see that we are able to generate really complex images just by using conditional GANs. Now a key problem here is of course that you need the two images to be aligned. So your conditioning image, like the edge image here, has to exactly match the respective handbag image. And if they don't, you wouldn't be able to train this. So for domain translation using conditional GANs, you need exact matches. In many cases, you don't have access to exact matches. So let's say you have a scene that shows zebras. You will probably not find a paired data set that shows exactly the same scene, but with horses. So you cannot just use it with a conditional gun. And the key ingredient here is the so-called cycle consistency loss. So you couple guns with trainable inverse mappings. And the key idea here is that you have one conditional gun that inputs G as the conditioning image and generates then some new output. And if you take this new output and use it in the conditioning variable of F, it should produce X again. So you use the conditioning variables to form a loop. And the key component here is that G and F should be essentially inverses of each other. So if you take F of G, you should end up with X again. And of course, also if you take G of F of Y, then you should end up with Y again. And this then gives rise to the following concept. So you take two GANs and two discriminators. One GAN G is generating from X, Y, and one GAN F is generating X from Y. And you still need the discriminators X and the discriminator of Y. And the two main additions to the GAN losses are, so of course you have the typical discriminator losses, the original GAN losses for DX and DY. And they are of course coupled respectively with G and F. But on top you put this cycle consistency loss and the cycle consistency loss is a coupled loss that at the same time translates X to Y and Y to X again and makes sure that the sample that is generated in Y is still not recognized by the discriminator. And at the same time you have the inverse cycle consistency which is then translating Y into X using F and then X into Y using G again while fooling the discriminator in X. So you need the two discriminators and this then gives rise to the cycle consistency loss that we have noted down for you here. And you can, for example, use L1 norms and the expected values of those L1 norms to form specific identities. So the total loss is then given as the GAN losses that we've already discussed earlier, plus lambda, the cycle consistency loss. So this concept is fairly easy to grasp, and I can tell you this has been widely applied. So there's many, many examples. You can translate from Monet to photos, from zebras to horses, from summer to winter, and the respective inverse operations. And if you couple this with more guns and more cycle consistency losses, then you're even able to take one photograph and translate it to Monet, Van Gogh, and other artists and have them represent their specific style. This is of course also interesting for autonomous driving, where you then can, for example, input a scene and then generate different segmentation masks. So you can also use it for image segmentation in this task. And here we have an ablation study for the cycle gun, where you show the cycle gun alone, the gun alone loss, the gun plus forward, gun plus backward, and the complete cycle gun loss. And you can see that with the cycle gun loss, you get much, much better back and forth translations if you compare this to the respective ground truth.
Okay, there's a couple of more things to say about guns, and these are the advanced gun concepts that we'll talk about next time in deep learning. So I hope you enjoyed this video and looking forward to see you in the next one. Goodbye.